Hi, good afternoon. I am Wendell Wallace, and I am a lecturer at the University of the West in the St. Augustine. However, this afternoon, this presentation is conducted on behalf of the Association of Caribbean Criminal Justice Practitioners. And basically, I will be looking at police leaders' perspectives on the death penalty, and I'll be looking at it in the context of the Caribbean. Now, when you think of the death penalty, first and foremost, what comes to mind is research conducted by academics, by lawyers, by researchers, and quite often they leave the voice of police officers um, unheard. So a group of researchers, we decided to come together and conduct the research so that we can hear the voices of police officers throughout the Caribbean as it relates to crime, as it relates to the death penalty, as it relates to crime reduction strategies. And before I go further into the presentation, I'd just like to acknowledge some of my colleagues. So I'd like to acknowledge some of the researchers, namely Karen Lancaster Ellis, Kim Ramsey, Steve Stewart, Portia Fraser, Atlee Rodney, Melissa Dupree, and Melissa Eiffel. These were some of the researchers who worked with me out of this project. So this presentation is based on a larger national study. Now, globally, police officers, they are at the front line of the fight against crime. They have the responsibility for its control, and more often than not, they have a very good idea as to what works and what doesn't work. As I said earlier, quite often they are not heard, their voices remain unheard. So we decided to ask, we decided to try to get some answers as to what works in the context of the death penalty, etc. So it says here, it's quite natural to ask them what works, what doesn't work. So police officers throughout the Caribbean, when you look at the, 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 the context, it's very much similar to what you have here in the United States of America. Now, in almost any jurisdiction where you had the English being the colonial masters, policing remained the same. Practically, whether it's Asia, Caribbean, Africa, policing remain the same. And the aim of the traditional model of policing as espoused by the English was top down, was based on control of a subjugated population and not necessarily service. And therefore, that's the genesis of our policing, and that's why you find you hardly ever heard the voice of our police officers. Now, in the Caribbean, it is even more relevant when you look at issues surrounding the death penalty. So the study will basically, as well as the results, will look at the death penalty as a crime reduction tool, as well as strategies used by police departments to reduce crime and deviance. But before we get there, I just want to introduce you to the, the death penalty in the Caribbean. It is very emotive. The very mention of the death penalty in the Caribbean can bring to the fore possibly three groups of individuals and maybe more. So you have opponents, you have proponents, and you have those who are wavering in between, all right? Um, according to um, Harrington, she said, the death penalty is a subject that in the words of Justice Adrian Saunders elicits passionate comments. And indeed, that passion comes from the fact that crime in the Caribbean, as well as the heinous nature, it's constantly on the increase. The New York State Catholic Conference, they said that um, citizens of the Caribbean are filled with fear, etc., and we believe that corporal punishment is the most appropriate response. Some people agree with that, policymakers agree with that, but some others, they differ as to what response or responses should be used. In terms of the study, the research group utilized seven commissioners of police in the USA, you will see chief of police. So we utilize seven commissioners of police or the head of the homicide department. And the fact is that we wanted to conduct this research on a pressing societal concern, which is crime as well as its um, control and prevention. In terms of our methodology, it's basically qualitative. We embedded a quantitative strand because, of course, we wanted to know um, the ages, the antecedents, basically, of our respondents. Um, we had structured interviews, self-reports. We used purposive sampling because we wanted persons who had information 
as to the, re the, the, the particular topic. We didn't want to go all about searching for persons. We simply wanted persons who had the relevant information. The countries that we use are listed here, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and of course, Trinidad and Tobago. In the context of the death penalty in the Caribbean, the death penalty is a post-colonial remnant of a pre-colonial era. In other words, we in the Caribbean, in the Anglophone Caribbean, we took the most of our laws from the English, who were our colonial masters. And thereafter, there is something known as the Savings Clause. And what the Savings Clause did is that it preserved the death penalty into our constitution so that the could not and still cannot be changed. So increased increase crime, continuously increasing, the heinous, nature, um, the heinous nature kept increasing as well. And therefore, stakeholders starting calling for the death penalty, the implementation of the death penalty as the silver bullet to solve our problems. Now interestingly, the death penalty remains as part of our legislation. Right? And these calls were predicated on the notion that the crime is a runaway horse and that we need to do something to stop the, 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 the crime and the criminals, more so in the Caribbean where our natural resources are very limited. And where we depend on sun, sea, and sand, to a large extent we depend on tourism for our foreign exchange. Uh, of course, we know that there are many persons who do not support the implementation of the death penalty. These here are some of those um, opponents, ranging from Harrington to Amnesty International. And interestingly, the only Caribbean writers here are Hood, Hood et al., and Hood and Simongol. Other than that, most of this research, they were conducted by researchers out of the Caribbean, and none, not one, um, utilized the voice of police officers. So I won't spend much time looking at the arguments for and against. We all know the arguments for and against the death penalty. Just to touch on a, on a few time, um, time consuming, innocent persons may be put to death, it's costly, it uh, sends the wrong message to society, brutalization effect, a whole host of reasons why people are opposed to the death penalty. But of course, where you have opponents, you will have proponents as well. So some of the proponents, they argue that you know, it, it's a deterrence, it's a de de there's a deterrent effect. Um, it brings closure and vindication to families as well. And it um, tends to send a message to the wider population of the future criminals, future murderers, that we will not tolerate that sort of behavior. In other words, they argue that the death penalty tends to bring a certain level of equilibrium and balance back to society. So I want to take you quickly into the results. Now, we asked these individuals probably over 20 questions, right? If I were to spend um, some time looking or introducing the results, we'll probably be here until 5, until 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we'll just look at some of the results, just a quick snapshot. So the question we asked, what is the most effective sentence that can be used as a deterrent to the commission of homicides? And now remember I said we used seven, um, it was seven participants, and the greater majority, four, indicated that the death penalty, now it's a qualitative study, and uh, with qualitative studies, we are not focused so much on numbers, but on content, on, uh, on, on the content and the context, that rich contextual data that we get from the results, right? So the death penalty was overwhelmingly the number one choice. The most effective strategy to reduce homicides, these are the, 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 this was supposed to be the most effective strategy, but of course the numbers came in very close. And the two, um, we had approximately three of the, the commissioners saying speedy apprehension of offenders and increased police presence is or would be the most effective strategy to reduce homicides. In terms of the top three choices to reduce violent crime, again, consistent use of the death penalty. So you're seeing where um, our police leaders are saying that the death penalty is the most effective deterrent. So you're seeing consistent use of the death penalty was number one. Improved police infrastructure was the second um, choice. And removal of barriers to prosecution of offenders and longer prison sentences, that was your third choice. 
Some other results um, indicate, for example, main obstacles to protection of citizens because we wanted to know what are some of the obstacles? What would hinder the protection of our citizens? Um, and the main obstacles, poor law enforcement resources. Indeed, when you look at our resources uh, that are a portion and a to our law enforcement agents, they pale in comparison to, for example, health, education, etc., with good reason as well. Um, we have a, 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 a judicial system that is referred to as immobile, frustratingly immobile as well, and they're saying that we need, that's a major obstacle. When you have persons on remand yard for 10, 12, 14 years, indeed, that doesn't augur well for our criminal justice system. And interestingly, they pointed to poor parenting as one of the obstacles to the protection of our citizens. In terms of the most effective, uh, the most cost effective strategy to re reduce violent crime, again, the death penalty figured prominently, right? But you're saying, all police officers are saying, neighborhood watches followed by the death penalty as well as community policing. What was the most appropriate sentence for an offender convicted of murder? Our police officers, again, these are our leaders who we are asking what work, and they say the death penalty, but closely following behind was life without parole. So you're seeing where we are being increasingly punitive. And finally, the final result I, I looked at was generally I wanted to get a feel, a broad sense in the, in the context of how do they support the death penalty? What, what was their support for the death penalty? And there were four questions. I oppose the death penalty. You realize no one opposes the death penalty, right? So they're saying, we think that the death penalty is the premier tool that we should use as a deterrent um, to crimes, to heinous crimes in the Caribbean. So the first point, I support the death penalty and think it works well. Two persons um, proffered that view. I support the death penalty in certain circumstances. Two persons um, supported that view. Philosophically, I support the death penalty, but I do not think it's an effective policing tool in practice. So generally, they are saying that whether they, 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 they do not see it as a, a tool of reduction or not, basically they are saying, we support the death penalty. So the study is practically, it's ongoing. Uh, we are trying to refine the study and to have it published because I think it's important that the Caribbean as a people and the, the wider global society understand that views on crime and crime reduction cannot be from outside in, but in some instances it must be from inside looking out. So thank you very much. That's the end of the presentation. Or oh, before I end, before I end, um, just these are some of the comments because it's a qualitative study. So I just wanted to share some comments by the police leaders. So the death penalty should be restructured so that murders should be categorized. But in the end, we must keep the death penalty. It all boiled down to keeping the death penalty. Police youth clubs are a wonderful initiative that could be translated into policy to get at many of the youths before the criminals get at them. So they were looking at some of the strategies that could be used as crime reduction. And final, finally, I don't think it, that penalty should be abolished. I'm a firm believer in the Bible and advocates if you live by the sword, you should die by the sword. So basically, the, the, the major tenet is that we believe in the death penalty. So thank you very much. Uh, this is my contact information if anyone needs to get in touch with me. Um, mobile, email. Questions, that's it? Yes. Yes, I understand that in England they've abolished the death penalty. So why are they such big proponents of it in the Caribbean? Right. Um, yes, this is an interesting question, right? Of course, uh, England were our colonial masters, and they have moved away from using the death penalty. Um, however, because of the Savings Clause 1, it was retained as part of our constitution. And secondly, the leaders, they're searching for answers as to what can we do about this so-called runaway horse. And it seems as though the death penalty is the easiest train to jump on because we've already had it, so let's use it. This is just my suggestion uh, based on research uh, that it seems to be the easy way out. It seems to be the easy way out. Mm -hmm. Questions? Any further questions? Right, thank you very much. You've been a very appreciative audience. Mm -hmm.